Well, Ranger fans, this is not a place we thought we would be just a couple days ago. Game six coming up tomorrow night in Carolina. Rangers still have a 3-2 lead, but it is shrunk down to one game. And after game five at the Garden, you start to be a little bit concerned about what's going on here in this series. Because Carolina has now gotten to the point where they, they start to believe that this can be done, that it's possible. And that's the worst possible thing you could have is have them believe that they can actually do this and come back. Now, I didn't see game five live. I, I was at the Mets game with a whole nother story, the Mets game, a whole nother disaster. But I did have it on my phone. I was watching it. And now, after they come into the garden, beat the Rangers, the, the, we got cocky. I think the Rangers got a little complacent. I think they got a little cocky even going into game five. I think they figured, okay, we lost game four. Carolina's not a bad team. They were going to win one. We weren't going to sweep them. They came into game five, and they were complacent, and they got outworked, and they got beat. And it was it was sloppy, and the power play hasn't been good. Now for two straight games, um, Igor has let in four goals for the first two times in his playoff career. The, the, there, were, there were mistakes by, by big names on the Rangers. Zabanajad on the first goal, just deciding to, to go for a change, skate to the bench as Stalls rushing into the Rangers zone. I, I don't know what he's thinking. Left it, left it a clear path to the goal. Stall went right in. Shesterkin was out of position, I think, on the first goal. He went around him, put it in the net, tie game. To give up four goals in the third period, even going into that third period, you kind of thought like, okay, listen, I'm not feeling great about this. Igor Shesterkin has kept him in the game. It's, he's the reason it's one nothing. He played brilliant in the first uh, two periods. He didn't even play bad in the third period, but it was just an onslaught. And now the, the series is, you could feel it shifting. And the Rangers just got to put their foot down now and end this thing in six games. Because if you get to a seventh game, you could roll the dice, anything could happen. And if you get to a seventh game, you are playing to be on the wrong side of history. They're playing to be on the right side of history. And... You know, if you get off to a bad start, if anything like that happens, all of a sudden you, you start reeling, you get back on your heels, and, and before you know it, you, you lose. Now, they, listen, there were, there were certain things in this game that make you say, like, okay, this is what I'm concerned about. Like I said, like I mentioned before, the power play has just gone ice cold. Zabanajad going to the bench, just a brainless play. Panarin on a back check on one of the other goals, not lifting the guy's stick. He just lifts the guy's stick and the puck goes in harmlessly into the corner. He doesn't do it. Now, I know coming back from 03 is, is something, you know, it, but if there's one sport that it happens more in than the other ones, it's hockey. It's happened three times. Three times that teams have done it. They've come back from 03 holes. It's never happened in the NBA. It's happened once in baseball, and we all know what that what, when that was. So now we go. They go to Carolina, Game Six tomorrow night, and I think that the the first period is going to be huge in this game. You have got to get off to a good start. You've got to take that crowd out of it. Take the belief away from the from from the Hurricanes that they can actually do this. You had your foot on their neck. Now they've started to get up a little bit, and now they believe that they could come back. And that's the scariest part. It's a concerning issue now that the Rangers, I mean, we went from, listen, we got a little cocky, right? We were all talking 16 and 0, back-to-back -back sweeps, so we're going to the parade, uh, looks like 94. Well, we got smacked upside the head with some reality with that game the other night. Because Carolina is a good hockey team. And they showed it. They they played, they played outplayed the Rangers from the first puck drop to the, the last horn. Now, if you're the Rangers, listen, you gotta you just got to calm down, gather yourself. You're a good hockey team. You could win one of these two games. As, as bad as it seems right now, Carolina is only halfway to this comeback. Coming back from down 0-3 is is a long way 
And they're only halfway there. You just got to win one of two games. And they're starting to believe, and that's that's the problem. Panarin's been... Panarin's just been bad the last two games. He has a, a minus five in games uh, four and five. I'm sorry, in games three... Uh, yeah, in games four and five, he's a minus five. He has only two shots. He averages four shots a game. You got Fox, who's clearly injured. His leg is clearly bothering him because Fox hasn't done barely anything offensively in the whole playoffs. And, and it might be good that they're going on the road, right? Get, get out of this, get out of the, out of New York, get away from the spotlight, maybe for a little bit. We'll see if Heedle comes back. They're saying that, that his illness that uh, kept him out of games four and five, like that kept him out of game five was not related to the, to the concussions. Now I, I'm not, I don't know if that's true or not. They, they, they're not going to get any truth in the playoffs. They're telling you upper body, lower body. They're telling you Fox is fine. I would hope, I'd like to hope that if it was related to the concussions, they wouldn't even tease you with it. Cause I mean, that's, that's serious. You know, they ain't talking serious stuff, but I mean, it, uh, we, it would be very, very beneficial to get be able to get Heedle back because if they don't get Heedle, you're looking at either Brzezinski or Rempe, and I don't trust either one of them as far as I can throw them. Especially Rempe, especially a rookie enforcer. You could just see Rempe going out there and taking a bad penalty, right? You could see it. The Rangers, they, they, they were holding on in the, in the third period. They kind of, once they got that goal in the second period, you could see them take the take the foot off the gas, which I didn't like either. And then in the third period, it, I mean, you're talking four goals, three goals in, in a matter of six minutes. It was, you know, like that, and the game was over. Kreider, Trocek, Zabanajad, Panarin, they all got to look in the mirror. And Panarin has got to really look in the mirror because now it what's creeping into the Rangers' mind as the as Carolina is starting to believe that they might be able to do this and actually come back and take this series, the Rangers, it's starting to creep into their head that maybe last year wasn't a fluke. Panarin, remember Panarin was one of the main culprits last year in the four straight losses after taking the first two on the road. Now Panarin's had two straight bad games. You got to get all that out of your head. You just got to go out and win a hockey game. Panarin is a world-class talent. He's one of the best players in the world at this game. That's why the start is so important Thursday night. Because if you get Carolina back on their heels, you might be able to bury them quick in the first period early in that game. And the Rangers are certainly capable of that. The power play is going to be important tomorrow. You gotta, you gotta get it back going. This power play was lethal for seven games in this in this playoffs, and then it's just kind of died out. Don't take stupid penalties. Shosturkin will be okay. He will give you a good game. You know he will. But you can't hang him out to dry by going to the bench when they're entering the zone, or by not back checking properly, or by giving up two on ones on on shorthanded. The power play at the end of the first period, the one that bled into the the second period a little bit, like 30 seconds or whatever it was, was a terrible-looking power play. Carolina almost scored. Rangers escaped that first period scoreless. Carolina had a couple good chances. They had the better chances, and they had a better chance on that power play shorthanded. So we'll see. But remember, they're only halfway there. As bad as it feels now, Carolina's only halfway to this comeback. You build yourself up capital, a lot of capital with a 3-0 lead. Game four was kind of, eh, took a bad penalty late, got a, gave up a late power play goal, game over. Okay, you can live with that. You know, Carolina's a good team. They're going to win a game. We were all crazy. We were all caught in the fog of thinking that, that Rangers might not lose. So they lost that game. But then to come back and follow that up with a, with a performance like they did in game five is just... That's where the concern is. 
And now the good thing is, is I think that the players that need to improve, the ones that, that really cost the Rangers of the game, Panarin, Zabanajad, Fox, those guys, if, if you have confidence in anybody coming back and playing a good game, bouncing back off of that, it's those guys. They're top players in the league. This team hasn't had a run of four straight losses all year. They haven't had a run of three. They've had very few runs of three straight bad games. So you gotta have so you have confidence that they're gonna come out and they're gonna take care of business. They're gonna fix the problems. We'll see if Hedel plays. I, I hopefully Hedel is in the lineup. He played a good game three. But I'm not, I don't think we could count on that. And I wouldn't listen to anything they, they tell you regarding injuries, any NHL team in the playoffs. We'll see tomorrow if he comes out for the morning skate. We'll see if we get any news today. If he came out today for the morning skate, we'll you know. That's how you're gonna you're gonna know if he's if he's gonna if he's gonna go or not. But if the Rangers come out and play their game, they should be able to win one of two. You don't you'd rather not get get this thing back here for game seven Saturday because then 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 anything can happen. And you don't want to be in a situation where anything can happen. You know, a bad bounce of the puck, a, a deflection, and all of a sudden you're the Yankees and the Red Sox. I saw someone online um, yesterday, Facebook or one one of those, asked, "Is if the Rangers blow this, is it as is it worse than the Yankees blowing their three zero lead to the Red Sox?" And the answer is no. One, it was the Red Sox. Two, the curse that they were overcoming. Three, it was the ALCS. This is a second round series. And that's the only time it ever happened in baseball. It's happened three times. The Islanders have done it. Dug their way out of a three, uh, an 3 hole. So, listen, Panarin's got to put pucks on the net. That's what, that's what Carolina started doing. They started doing it right in game two. Yeah, they lost two and three, but they, they put pucks on the net, and good things can happen. All right? What's one thing you say when you go to a hockey game? Shoot the effing puck. You hear it a million times in the crowd. The Rangers just got to get, get shoot the effing puck. Hucks on net. Anderson is, is, is inferior goalie to, to Shesterkin. And good things will happen. Look at the bad goals he let up. He's let up goals from Lafreniere behind the goal line. I think he's overrated. He's not a bad goalie, but he's overrated. Put pucks on the net and good things will happen. And know your assignment's coming back. I mean, for crying out loud, Sabanajet, don't go to the bench when they're entering the zone. And they know that. They know, listen, if we all saw it, they, they saw it. Believe me, they got it drilled into their head. And now this is the third coach this team has had in four years. Their first time to the playoffs with this coach. He's an all-time coach. And I, and I think he's going to have this team ready. I'm not worried yet. I'm concerned because, like I said, Carolina's starting to believe. And when you start to believe... Things start to happen. The Rangers, you know, thoughts of last year start creeping into their head. Remember, that whole coaching staff got fired because of that. Those players have got to, they had to have felt a little responsible. They were responsible. Now, I don't think, you know, this coaching staff's not going anywhere either way. You're a president's trophy team. You go out there and you win a hockey game. They were right in, By now, we, we expected to be sitting around watching the Bruins and the Panthers Beat each other up for six, seven games, licking our chops, getting ready for the Eastern Conference Finals. Instead, we're going to play game six, and we're talking about blowing a 3 0 series lead. Still a long way to go for Carolina, and for that to happen, they're only halfway there. Digging yourself out of an 0 3 hole is a big, tall task. Carolina up for it? Are the Rangers up for letting it happen? We'll find out the next step tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, in Raleigh. It's game six, the Rangers and the Hurricanes. Enjoy it, everybody. Let's go, Rangers.